two, three, and and all the tricks they work. I guess it's good for the people. It's good for the world. And all the party girls, they're making strides in their lives. It works. It works. Hello, my name's Monique Claire and I am a folk pop singer-songwriter and multi-genre cellist and session musician. Um, the work that I've been doing over the last few years has taken me to lots of different situations where um, people create music very differently and um, audiences engage with it very differently. Um, and this has been a really interesting process to go through because I've had the opportunity to kind of try and make sense of that and take notes of how humans work and how we all relate to art. So what I wanted to talk about for my Dots and Loops video is how to write engaging songs and I'm definitely not an expert on this. Um, I'm going to be giving you my take on it, um, which as, as I was Kind of getting at before is formed by being involved with many different genres of music and just being very interested in human psychology. Okay, so um, just a little bit more background about me before we really get into it. I started songwriting when I was in high school but I didn't do anything with my songs back then because I thought I was a rubbish singer and I thought that cello wasn't a useful instrument to accompany yourself with. I thought I would have to learn guitar or piano if I wanted to be a songwriter and um, I just sucked at those instruments. So that never happened. And it only was about five or six years ago when I really started writing for cello and voice and started learning how to sing and play at the same time. I feel very grateful for that uh, progression because if I had forced myself to learn one of those more classic songwriting instruments, I don't know that I would have really been forced to think so critically about how you write an accompaniment for a song. Um, this is a very unusual instrument to use for accompaniment and it really makes you think differently about it. You've only got four strings and usually you can only play two of those strings at any one time as opposed to piano where you have ten fingers or guitar you've got six strings and you can just strum that chord and it's all there all at once. So um, this instrument it, it does prove to be a bit of a challenge but I really like that because it makes me think so more, much more critically about the whole thing. Another factor which influences the topic that I'm going to talk about is the fact that I have mild ADHD, which means that when I'm listening to music, especially if I'm sitting in an audience at a gig, I get bored really quickly. And the most amazing music to me is music that um, keeps kind of rolling along and adds these sparks of interest throughout. So even if it's a really like a 10 minute long song, you've got this evolution throughout the song that um, really holds your interest and so being hypercritical of that myself that's how I like to write music I kind of cater to people who are like me and that kind of brings me to to the first kind of disclaimer about this that I want to make which is that you might feel like this is totally irrelevant to you as a music maker but I would encourage you to think about people in the audience who have really short attention spans especially given that these days, you don't have to have ADHD to have a short attention span. We've all kind of been trained into it by our phones and busy lives. Uh, so I think it's really worth thinking about that when you're writing music. The second disclaimer I want to make is that I do see a lot of value in music that doesn't stick to this format. I think that there is a lot of value in music that is kind of long form or jarring or more statement oriented and equally there's a lot of value in music that doesn't really 
um, push push any boundaries. You know, say a covers gig at a pub. Um, that really has value in our culture and society. And so I'm not trying to take a dig at those ways of making music. This is more like if you are playing gigs or you're you're releasing music that's getting streamed or downloaded and you're just noticing that people aren't engaging with it as much as you would like them to or they're leaving halfway through your set at a festival or they're yawning in the middle of your song I mean give yourself the benefit of the doubt like maybe they're just tired but if you if you are starting to feel like you could be doing more with your songwriting or your your composing that helps really keep people there with you so that there's just no chance that they're going to leave. Um, this is what I'm talking about. All right, so let's dig into how to write engaging songs slash music. My philosophy in music writing is to think equally about the psychology of humans as well as my own needs as an expressive person. I need um, to express feelings that I have and I need to process emotions through songwriting and sometimes it's really important for me to kind of disregard what other people think and instead just cater to myself but across the range of my repertoire I'm trying to always achieve this balance of really looking after my audience um, making sure that they feel safe with me um, and sometimes I'll, I'll push them a little bit but then I always want to bring it back to something that they're comfortable with and I think that that's, that's totally an okay thing to acknowledge that humans need that safety. I mean, that's such, a, um, that's such an ancestral or um, biological thing in terms of how, how we've survived over such a long period of time. Um, it's all about kind of finding your tribe and kind of blending in with them and... Um, really knowing what's what, knowing what food you have available wherever you are. Um, if you see this sort of strange looking new berry that's bright red and you've never seen it before, you're probably not going to put it in your mouth and eat it because it's unfamiliar and it might be poisonous. Um, of course, I think it's really important as well that humans push themselves to respond positively or neutrally to things that are different because um, the opposite of that can lead to really toxic behavior like racism um, but in terms of just creating music that you want people to engage with I think that it's it's totally an okay thing to acknowledge this about humans so we we need that sense of familiarity um, to feel you know to kind of let our guard down and let something new in but we also crave novelty and thrills to a certain extent so I kind of like to think that when I'm making music, I'm kind of laying out this canvas of familiarity and comfort for people. But then throughout that, I'm, I'm weaving or injecting little bits of novelty through it to keep people interested. All right, so I thought I would put this philosophy into context by walking you through one of my songs. This is a song that I released really recently. It's called It Works. And if you haven't heard it yet, I'd suggest just going to wherever you go to listen to music, whether that's Bandcamp, Spotify, YouTube, um, and listen through the whole song first, um, because I'm going to be doing it very much chopped up right now. So it'll be good if you hear it first and can anticipate how one section goes into the next and keep an ear out for, for how I'm keeping it rolling along and changing throughout the song. And then I'll break it down for you. So the song kicks off with an arpeggio, which sounds like this. Now, that's a, a G minor arpeggio with this little F sharp note stuck in there. I would say that a G minor arpeggio is a pretty common sounding chord. So... People have definitely heard that before time and time again. And so the way that I'm trying to keep this, keep the way that I'm trying to keep this a, a little bit different and a bit more engaging is by injecting that little F sharp in um, to kind of make you, you know, take a second, uh, what's the, what's the phrase? Um, 
a double take. Yeah, sort of like a, an oral double take. And the other thing that I'm doing to try and keep this first line really interesting is instead of just playing it really straight, I'm adding in some accents and I'm changing them for each bar. So the first bar, it's on the first beat and the third beat. And then for the second bar, instead of accenting the first beat, we actually knock that back a quaver and we're going to accent the very last quaver from the first bar. We're also going to accent the second quaver in the second bar and then keep the third one accent, the third beat accented the same as the first bar, which all together sounds like this. Right? So I'll just show you what it would have sounded like if I'd gone with just a G minor arpeggio and no accents. And then I'll show you with the F sharp and the accents. Verses. I mean, I like the second option better. <laughs> Maybe you don't and that's okay. The rest of the verse, kind of rolls along similarly. The, the chords change a little bit. We've got the melody going over the top of that. Um, but the whole time it's kind of following this motion of going up and then coming down. By the time we get to the fourth phrase of the first verse, that's getting a little bit repetitive for my taste. And so I changed that up right at the end of the phrase um, with a different set of notes. And I'll just show you that now. I'll show you the whole first verse and have a listen out for where I switch up the sort of um, contour of the arpeggio. Now they've got me under their spell Oh, I would do So instead of going at the end, we go cool. That takes us into the chorus. And so far we've had this really thick, constant um, accompaniment in the cello. And I wanted to change that up um, at this point. And so what we have for the accompaniment instead is this two, three, and It's good for the people, it's good for the world. Um, and I would say that even though that's a very sparse accompaniment, the fact that it's so different from what came before um, gives it its own power. I think if you, if you did that for a whole song, it would kind of not feel like enough. But the fact that we've got the contrast there um, gives us gives us a fuller feeling across the whole song. Right, so after that chorus is finished, uh, we get to the post-chorus section and I'm going back to the arpeggio accompaniment that I was using in the first verse. But this time I wanna change it up a little bit. So instead of playing it in the same position that I did before, what I'm gonna do is move my bow closer to the bridge and that's a technique called sulpont. And it's gonna give it this kind of wispy, spooky sort of sound and I'm also adding in a vocal part on top of it uh, so that all together sounds like this <laughs> we go into verse two here the accompaniment changes completely now this is a part of every song where I, I put a lot of thought into this am I going to keep the accompaniment the same or am I going to change it up and sometimes because of the storytelling in the song I don't really want to break the flow so I just keep the accompaniment the same or sometimes it's the sort of the, the sound of the song is the kind of vibe where you would just want to like sit back in an armchair and relax and you know just let it roll over you um, and in that case 
yeah, I'd also just keep the accompaniment the same. But for this song, because there's just already so much kind of contrast and um, boldness in it, in, in the sort of lyrical meaning as well, I really want to keep it changing up. One thing that I'm keeping constant throughout the whole song is my bow moving back and forth. So at the start when we did the arpeggio, it was just going down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up. And then even in that chorus, when there were spaces between the notes, I was still moving the bow, but I was muting the strings with my left hand. And now that we get to verse two, the accompaniment sounds like this. And I just want you to listen out for all of the individual quavers that are still going, even if I'm not. Um, I think I do play notes constantly through this. Um, yeah, but just have a listen for that constant motion. One, two, three, and... <laughs> There's um, a second half to that verse, and then we go straight into the second chorus. And here I just change up the chords completely, which is not really normal for a chorus. Generally, the chorus is this really important part of your song that you need to be the same every single time. And that's because um, for, a, for a listener who's hearing this song for the first time, it can be overwhelming to have just new sounds, new chords, new lyrics coming at your face constantly and the chorus kind of serves as this like moment where you get to feel a bit of ownership and agency over the song because you already know what's coming um so psychologically it's a really really important part of songwriting um you don't always have to use it there's definitely heaps of songs that don't have choruses at all but um i think it just plays back into that whole balance that i was talking about before between giving people something to grab onto that's familiar and then injecting novelty into it but in this case, because the, the lyrical meaning of the song is so much about darkness and light and sort of romanticizing advertising and marketing versus criticizing it, um, I wanted to take this chorus and give it, um, give it this kind of ironic sounding four to the floor, like party beat sound. And I also wanted to make the chords sound happier to play into that lighter um, feeling. So here is the second verse, second chorus. One, two, three, and... And all the tricks they work, I guess it's good for the people, it's good for the world. And all the party girls, they're making strides in their lives, it works, it works. And then we get back into that darker, grungier kind of sound. That leads us to the bridge. And for the first part of the bridge, we get even lighter and I'm changing up the, the register of the accompaniment completely. Um, so going from down there all the way up to my harmonics here. And harmonics are a really great way on a string instrument to give it a sort of magical feeling. And that's what I wanted for this section is sort of like, um, you know, the, the, the magic of advertising kind of taking over you. So here is the bridge, the first half of it. Two, three. Beautiful, beautiful, like in magazines. Beautiful, beautiful, like on movie screens. Beautiful, beautiful, like in magazines. Beautiful, beautiful, like on movie screens. Beautiful. So now we're getting back into that grungier, darker sound again. Super, super contrasted. Um, what did I want to say about that bit? Oh, the other thing that we're doing here is previously what we've heard from these kind of chorus chords is just a single note. So it's like G, D, E flat. And here, um, as the song is increasing in intensity, um, I'm adding a second note to each chord. So we've got G and D, 
D and B flat, and then E and B flat, etc. Um, and then as we go into the chorus, we're continuing that. Sounds like this. And all the tricks they work, I guess it's good for the people, it's good for the world. And all the party girls, they're making strides in their lives, great strides in their lives. And then we get to the double chorus. Um, it doesn't quite feel like the song is finished yet, so we're repeating the chorus. Um, but this time, I, I don't want to do it exactly the same way because if I was listening, I would get bored of that. So I'm adding in a third note to each chord. And I'm just really, really digging into my strings to catch all three of those notes at once. Remember at the start of the video, I said that you can only play two notes at the same time on cello. There are moments when you can bend that rule. If you just like hack into the instrument hard enough, then it's possible. <laughs> so the second of those choruses sounds like this. Two, three, and. And all the tricks they work. I guess it's good for the people. It's good for the world. And all the party girls, they're making strides in their lives. It works, it works. the end of the song. Overall the main point that I would want to make about this whole thing is that you want something in your song or your piece of music that repeats, that people feel like they know and have agency over. So that could be a chorus, it could be kind of these repeating lyrics or um, sa the same chords the whole way through the song, um, could be the same drum beat, the the same rhythm in the melody just something that people can hang on to or it could be the fact that your piece or your song kind of builds on something that already exists in the world which isn't plagiarism it's just it's it's kind of like piecing together music within the context of the world that we live in um so you're coming from this perspective of you know giving people something to grab onto and then you're changing it up as you go through the song and that could be like say if we're talking about choruses and you've got the same lyrics the same melody probably the same chords then something you could be doing each time you come back to the chorus is varying the volume of it you could be increasing the volume throughout the song and i would say that's kind of what happens in this song um the first chorus is definitely the quietest the second one is somewhere in the middle and then the last two are louder and then even louder still. Uh, you can kind of like mess around a little bit with the rhythm of the melody. Um, you hear that done a lot in um, pop singers like Beyonce or Mariah Carey. Um, they get to the last chorus of the song and they just go for it and they're putting in all of these extra notes in between the melody and really like holding onto notes longer than they did before and that's that kind of gives people a real thrill because they know what to expect but then you're kind of like withholding it or coming in earlier than they expect um you like i mentioned in the song you can change the chords as long as the melody and the lyrics are staying the same um you could also be changing the register of the accompaniment so be playing low down and then another time you play the chorus maybe it's like quieter and you're playing really high um, on on the piano or the guitar or your cello or your harp or whatever instrument you're using to to accompany yourself um, or it could be that previously the chorus melody was low and then for the last one you're gonna jump it up the octave and really like take it there um, you could go from a smooth style of accompaniment to something that's a lot choppier or vice versa. Um, or you could be playing the normal chords, but you're adding kind of fills in between them or just little kind of extra tidbits that keep it interesting. So that's the song and that's my philosophy and approach to writing engaging music. 
I hope that you could find something within that that applies to your style of music making or even if you don't make music but you're a teacher or you have to do public speaking or something like that where you're really engaging with people and you need to hold their attention. I think that generally just taking a moment to think about the variety of humans you're going to have in your audience and how all of their brains work and trying to kind of cover your bases in that way it can be so valuable for this kind of thing um, I'd love to know what you think about this it's definitely not a hard and fast method um, it's not the only way to do things this is purely my take so let me know your thoughts about it if you'd like to keep up with my music, um, the best way would be to sign up to my mailing list on my website, which is moniqueclaire.com, or follow along on Instagram, Monique Claire Music, or you can also just um, listen to my music on Spotify or purchase it on Bandcamp. That's really great too. Um, I'd like to say a huge thanks to Dots and Loops for having me present this little video. I've played a few Dots and Loops concerts in the past, um, when I was kind of more of a classical cellist and I just love the artistic vision of that team and how they're trying to add something fresh and new into the music scene. I really appreciate that and I appreciate you for tuning in if you've made it this far. Thanks for sticking with me and good luck with your songwriting. Music